Hello ladies and gentlemen, Tamperon here and welcome back to Torment Tides of Numenera Beta. I have zoomed in here so we can see the cool little effect that's going on with our companion here, Calistag. Uh, the many different versions of herself that are floating around her body, that's, that's awesome. I really like the way that that looks. But let's uh, zoom back out and see if these guys have anything more to say to us. I don't like the smell of this dome. Let's go sooner or not later. Okay, how about you? We should not tarry in this chamber long. No doubt others saw your dramatic entrance as well. All right, I may try a little bit of a different voice for uh, uh, Allegrin here. A spoiler though, none of my voices are that good uh, and the accents are especially bad, so I do apologize in advance for that. Please do not be offended. I'm not trying to be a uh, culturist or racist or anything like that. I'm just not very good at doing it. A mechanical arm lies on the floor, presumably broken during your fall. Sparks pour from the, from the arm's shattered housing, filling the air with a greasy stench. Uh, I think the first rule that we've learned playing this game thus far is to examine everything at least twice before you attempt to do anything with it. The sharply pointed apparatus that formerly topped the device appears burned out and useless, but the equipment in the base remains at least somewhat operational, as the constant stream of sizzling motes can attest. Uh, examine it again. Sparks angrily leap to and fro amidst the severed cables and other components, some of which may have value. Let's attempt to scavenge. Uh, and it's easy, but let's take it to routine. There we go. Success. Taking care to work around the sparks, you manage to extract an unbroken component from the housing's interior. You don't see anything else of value inside the demolished machine. Great. What else is there here? The sarcophagus itself? Sunlight falls through the ragged hole in the roof onto the shattered resonance chamber. It is hard to believe that you did this. That you plummeted through the curve of the pale blue sky, crashed through the dome, and broke this delicate machine with your own body. It's hard to believe that you are still alive. Four mechanical arms hang over the center of the device above the cracked, semi-transparent crystal of the sarcophagus. The fifth arm lies broken on the floor among the scattered synth and crystal shards, and a metal ring surrounds the array, dented and broken by your impact crater. Let's take a closer look. The padded interior beneath the coffin's cracked lid looks like it was made for a human body. Despite the damage, you don't see any way to open it and get inside. You glance between the sarcophagus and the needle light protrusions at the ends of the arms above. It seems likely that using this chamber would not be a pleasant experience. Uh, take another look at the sarcophagus. It may be your imagination, but some of the cracks in the crystal seem shallower than they were before. So is it healing itself? Uh, let's look at the suspended arms. Cables run from the machines along the dome's walls to the base of the suspended arms each of which is capped with long needles aimed at the cracked coffin-like chamber at the center of the platform. Gem-like lights flicker dimly at the bases of the arms. Once more. The needle-like extensions at the ends of the arm glitter in the dome's faint light. A number of the lights at the bases of the arms have gone out. What about the metal ring? You feel the slightest hint of resistance every time you cross the ring, and now that you're paying attention, you note that your breath is echoing in your ears as though you were inside a glass dome. When you step outside the ring, the feeling passes. Hmm. The ring seems to project some kind of field like a protective dome around the sarcophagus. Wonder if that's magic or some sort of science. Well, what about the shards that are on the ground? Jagged fragments of crystal are intermingled with synth from the shattered dome above. 
The crystal shards glitter in the light like captive suns. Um, pick one up because we can't examine them again. Look, okay. Did we lose? No, we didn't. At the rim of the crater, you find a sliver of crystal, sharp as a dagger on one end and smooth on the other. It might make a usable, if somewhat crude, weapon. Awesome. Are there any more useful shards? You sort through the remaining pieces of crystal, but they are too small or too unwieldy to be of any use. All right, well, step away. Let's uh, see what that looks like. Oh, we equipped it. Uh, so it's a light bladed weapon, stat pull used for effort, speed two. Okay, here we go. Uh, damage two, physical damage, bonus damage per level of effort two, max of two. Yeah, and we have the uh, light and medium weapons, so it's easier to use. Cool. We got a weapon now, now we need some armor. Anything else to be seen? What's this? This machine hums softly, buffeting the air around you the closer you come to it. Why did you run all over there, lady? Tiny glowing motes float through the interior of this tower. Each one is surrounded by much smaller motes, like thousands of worlds circling the sun. It's awesome. Is this the same? It is. Oh, they're suns. Oh, I guess this is a control panel of some sort. A slate black, unimpressive device hunkers before you. As you reach out to touch it, the triangle of lights on its case, on its cast, or if I could pronounce any words, on its casing blazes into life and an image unfolds in your mind. A towering crystal arch rises over a jagged gray landscape. The air is dead and stifling, and there, at its emerald peak, the image collapses, leaving you staring into the device's triangular array of lights. Command me, the device, or the intelligence within it, says, each word carefully etched with distaste. Uh, just who are you? Your command was not understood, the intelligence says with clear satisfaction, sounding for all the world like it understood the question, but is choosing not to answer. Command me. Well, what was that arch you showed me? Your command was not understood, the intelligence chuckles, its lights pulsing. Command me. Well, what commands do you recognize? The three lights throb irritably. Heated air sighs from the device's vents, and then a towering list of commands races through your mind. Far too fast to read. You rub your eyes, groaning, and the intelligence chortles. Command me, it says smugly. So we can kick it? <laughs> Let's not kick it. Um, show me the list again. Slower, please. If anything, the list pours through your mind even faster than the last time. Co man me. The intelligence draws. Um, examine the device. An indignant hum rises from the intelligence's engines as you examine its ancient casing. Nothing out of the ordinary. You step back, and the hum fades away. Show me the arch again. The device's triangle of lights throb in time with the growl of the engines within its casing, and the mental image unfolds once more. You see a huge crystalline arch on a jagged field. The arch is divided into rectangular cells, all of which are numbered, and they all appear to be transparent and empty, except at the arch's pinnacle, 
One cell is lit in a brilliant, pulsating emerald. The number zero is painted on its side. Uh, let's try to remember more details. And let's increase our success rate, please. Oh, success. The memory blossoms. You stand before this arch, eyeing the last two active cells in once impenetrable Lugum Vo. Unleash cell 29, you say, and a twisted artifact appears before you. You claim it with a faint smile, watching the light fade from the cell far above. You flinch from the memory, and it falls apart as you raise your eyes to the arch as it is now. Cell 29 is dark. Now, only cell 0 remains. But what about the jagged wasteland, then? Dry grit whirls across the empty plain. Many kilometers beyond the arch is the faint outline of what seems to be a broken tower, except that it is slowly stretching into the gray air. Uh, look again. Far beyond the arch, the broken tower reaches for the pale, red-threaded clouds. One more time. Okay, so we're repeating now. Uh, close the image. Okay. Unleash the contents of cell zero. Cell zero will now be unleashed, the intelligence spits. Please be advised that the object you are about to receive is completely safe. Use no caution whatsoever. The strange contents of cell zero materialize before you. Warning. All cells are now vacant, shuddering Lugum Vo. The intelligence's lights wink out one by one. So, judging by the attitude and behavior of this intelligence that we were talking to, this item is probably very unsafe and should be treated with the utmost caution. In any case, we got three experience and the item, I guess, is called the Shatter Star. Interesting that a cast-off can command the changing god's machines. He crosses his arms across his chest. How'd you do that? Calisteg rolls her, eye, rolls her eyes at Allegrin. Then she looks to you. He'll never stop gnawing on this bone, you know. The truth is wasted on him. She, gl she gets a glint in her eye. Though I admit curiosity, how did you do that? Well, I remembered something. I don't think it was my memory, though. Residual memories of a past consciousness. Truly fascinating. Oh, don't act like you know what it was. It's just as likely that the machine triggered something past his amnesia. She gives you a meaningful look, then mimics teeth gnashing like an animal gnawing a bone. I got you, Calisteg. I'm picking up what you're laying down, I guess. So, what is this thing we got? Shatter Star. What is this 25 here? Is that the value? This mini pointed star has a shimmering bluish surface, highly polished to touch and sight. Though it appears at first glance to be crystal, it actually has a very fine mechanical structure. On the slightest impact, even a light tap of the finger, it shatters into many pieces and then immediately reforms. That's interesting if relatively... I have no idea how much it's worth or what its value is. I guess this is like a value, 15 and the star's worth 25. I really don't know. I guess we'll find that out as we go on or maybe it's not really implemented yet. In any case, I think that's everything that was available. Oh, no, we can look at this. Oh, it's the same thing about the moats. Alright, let's head outside, shall we? If an enemy is armored, change up the damage type of your attacks. Okay, so different armor absorbs or is more effective at different, against different types of attacks. So, this guy's got the talk symbol flashing. What have you got to say? This is a reef of fallen woods, kid. 
It's a dangerous place at the best of times. And with you lighting up the sky as you fell, he looks over his shoulder. We should get out of here as soon as possible. Why were you looking at me when you said that? I wasn't, he growls. Don't be so paranoid. But when she isn't looking, he raises his eyebrows at you knowingly. So, what makes this reef so dangerous? The Numenero of the past are always dangerous, but there are other dangers too, some closer than others. So, what are the Numenera? You want me to tell you? He laughs without mirth. The Numenera are all around you. Everything left over from the prior worlds, Sage's Cliffs, thrives by trading artifacts from ancient civilizations. Hells, you can't scoop a handful of earth without finding drift. Finding drift from prior worlds mixed with it. Numenera is anything from the prior worlds, but mostly we mean the stuff of value to us. A lot of the Numenera are just oddities, fancy trinkets with little real use, but sometimes you'll get a cipher that lets you do something incredible. Artifacts are worth even more. A cipher will only do something once, but artifacts last a lot longer, though they can burn out at the most inconvenient times. He frowns. Not that it's ever happened to me. Of course, we got no idea what most of this junk was originally intended for. In most cases, it doesn't really matter. Like, you might find what used to be a propulsion unit for a star chariot, but who the hell knows, what, knows enough to build you the rest of it? Better to use it as a weapon or a power source. He scowls, frustrated about something. I bet we could remake the world if we knew a tenth of the secrets of the ancients. But most days, it's a challenge just to survive. Well, what's your story then, sir? Ask me again when we get out of here. I don't trust this damned reef any more than the company we keep. So, you and Calisteg are not actually on the best of terms, I guess. What do you think about her? A parasite, disguised as a scholic. Don't be surprised if she betrays you before the day is done. Actually, that would be slow for her. Well... What about your tattoos? They look almost alive, and I really hope I can get some of those. These? They're nothing. Call them a consolation if you must. He smiles grimly. Some call them by worse names, but that's because they've had occasion to run afoul of these little snakes. <laughs> he looks away. This line of questioning is clearly at an end. So... What do you think we should do next? You want to fix that crystal chamber back there, yeah? First thing is getting out of this reef. Well, let's keep going then. Do you have anything to say, my dear? Watch your steps, child. This is not a place to walk lightly. There are dangers in the reefs, both old and new. So what kind of dangers are you going to tell me of? Myriad, we walk among the Numenera, detritus of fallen worlds and antediluvian wars. Not everything in the reef knows that its wars ended long ago. Yet the true dangers are contemporary. The reef holds the promise of treasure for the determined, but not always for the scrupulous. So, why is this resonance chamber here? An astute question, my dear. The most likely answer is that your sire discovered something he could repurpose for his own designs. If you conceal a dome as well as he did, the reef is as good a place as any for experimentation. Okay. And what's your story? She laughs. Now is not the time, dear. Nor is the reef a safe place for lengthy disquisition. Rest assured... When we reach the cliffs, there will be plenty of time to swap tails. 
All right. And what do you think about your buddy here? Her lips pucker like she's tasting something foul. He's useful, she finally says. At least he was once. If that pompous lack nibber, forgive my language, dear, finds one more fault with me, I expect my sisters will murder him in several realities. She cocks her head to the side. Hmm. There goes one now. All right. So, who are all these echoes of you? They're me. We are a part of each other. Sisters across infinite realities. We share our experiences and power. What's that old saying? That experience brings wisdom? Why, I must be the wisest person in Sage's Cliffs. The wisest across countless worlds. Her laughter peels out. I don't know if I would make that exact interpretation, but if that's what you fancy, that's fine. And what do you think we should do next? If you want to fix that chamber, then we need to get out of the reef. That is our top priority. Well, at least you and him agree about something. Let's get going. What are these spinny pink dreidels? Let's check those out. Two floating cones whirl and spin deliriously around each other, giggling like children being tickled. The air around them smells of sweet, burning leaves. So we can talk to them? Well, I guess they are laughing. What are you? The cones continue whirling and laughing like enraptured dancers, giving no sign that they've heard you. Uh, watch them for patterns. The longer you stare at these artifacts, the more you're convinced that they turn faster when their spiraling paths cross each other. What are you for? The cones greet your question with a split second of hushed silence, followed by delighted peals of helpless giggling. They aren't for anything. They're from one of the worlds before this one. Allegrin rubs a hand along his stubbled jaw. Sometimes, the Numenera will do something useful. Sometimes, they'll turn you inside out. And sometimes, they don't do a damn thing that makes sense. I've often said the same thing about you, darling. Calistag murmurs. All right, uh, let's try talking to them one more time. Childlike laughter is their only response. Okay, probably will regret this, maybe lose a hand, but let's try touching a cone as it passes. Quick fingers. Okay. It's routine. Success. You manage to graze one of them with the tip of a finger. Rorn, a voice says, and your vision is stolen from you. A moon hangs over you, but it is not the one you recognize. It's black and in a pearl white sky. Thick, flat asteroids orbit it like petals in the wind. You feel questing tendrils at your ankle and the hot wind on your face smells of scorched hair and grief. Wow. To experience. Your vision returns. The cones hang motionless for only a second before resuming their giggling dance. So, we got some kind of a memory from these things? From a world that's in the past? Let's try one more time to speak with them. And it fails. Well, let's leave them alone. I guess they were good for some experience and storytelling. What's this thing? So we go that path. We can interact with this. A matte black obelisk floats in midair above the water. It has sharp, curved sides that converge to a glowing tip that brightens or dims with the passing of the day's faint breezes. Uh, let's touch it, I guess. You raise your hand toward the obelisk. Dull green light wells from within the black stone, fixed on you like a furious eye. Hopefully it will not burn me to a crisp. I knew someone who did what you're about to do, Allegrin says casually. Aeon priest. A beam 
came out the top of that thing and ripped his face off. Made a fancy nightlight out of his crystal necklace, though. But hey, I'm sure you know what you're doing. Uh, thanks for the warning? Oh, hush. At least that poor priest died in service of his curiosity rather than stumbling about the coast, complaining and feeling sorry for himself. Go ahead if you must, she tells you, ignoring Allegrin's glare. But do be careful. All right, so don't touch it. Uh, I don't want to leave it alone. Let's use our crystal shard that we found instead. Carefully, you level the shard at the obelisk, and a superheated beam lances from the tip of the structure into the crystal, sending vibrations up your arm and suffusing the shard with a warm green glow. Gained three experience. We lost the crystalline shard and gained... Oh, we got it. It's infused now. Okay. Uh, let's leave it alone. Let's not get our face burned off, shall we? Let's see what that did. Alright, so three physical death. So it increased the damage, I think, by one. I think this was two before. Oh, and the value's up. If this is value, I'm guessing that's what it is. It's up to 150. Cool. Well, I'll take that. Let's see what's uh, along this path here. Something we can interact with there. Little moats rising from the water there. A bubbling mass of sludge floats on the surface of the water. Every once in a while, an oily nodule separates from it and hurtles into the sky. Yeah, I'm seeing that. You catch a moment. You catch momentary glimpses of a muck-coated object in the putrid mass. Um, examine the sludge carefully. You lean closer to the heaving mass. After a moment's study, you notice that the gobules rising into the sky always contain something, be it a shining core of untainted seawater or a tiny fish. Alright, well, let's try to grab what's in here. We've been successful with this type of thing thus far. Uh, yes, we will use effort. Success, yay. The next time sunlight strikes the object's streaked surface, you're ready. You snatch it from the oily mass and clean it as best you can. Gained ecstasy glass? I'm not sure whether that awful muck is harmless or you are immensely lucky. Either way, do go on poking things, dear. It's quite entertaining. Um, search for more objects. You, sir, you spot no other mysterious objects in the bubbling mass. Uh, wait for more? Minutes tick past as you patiently wait beside the mass of sludge. Nothing surfaces. Let's wait again. And again. Cipher Sickness Minor? What? At last your patience is rewarded when an unusual object bubbles to the surface. Before it can sink out of sight, you snatch it up. 2 XP gains Cipher Sickness. Minor Fatal. Gained item, time step, blood stem. You found a veritable filth-stained trove. Well done, dear. Um. Let's wait one more time. Nothing else comes up. You got lucky, kid. But you're not going to find anything else. If it were that easy, you'd have scavengers camped here 28 hours a day. Alright, let's leave. What is Cypher Sickness? A low level effect of carrying more ciphers than you can safely manage. Oh. Okay. Ecstasy Glass grants a free recovery roll on use. Okay. And target one ally removes one random negative fetals. And this one we took removes the sorrow fra fragment charge up fetals. Can we yeah let's inspect. Ooh, this device is made of six conjoined glass spheres. When used the glass spheres take over the senses and flood the user with profound pleasure. The user cannot see, hear, smell, taste, or feel anything in the immediate surroundings during this time. Instead the glass grants the experience of whatever whatever is most desired be it eating a sumptuous meal, engaging in a sexual act with one or more people she desires, 
or simply setting or simply sitting comfortably in a beautiful landscape. This infuses the user with renewed energy, after which the glass spheres go dull and cannot be used again. Okay. And this one? This injector contains a gray liquid with swirls of gold. The amount of liquid contained seems to vary from moment to moment. Injected into the bloodstream, the liquid instantly and completely removes, this, removes a poison disease or other condition. Okay. Can we give, like... Well, it doesn't seem that we can. I'm going to try to give these to them. I guess we can check out their stuff. He's got armor. And a weapon. And we can't take their stuff. I guess that's to avoid abusing things here. Alright. So she's got a ranged weapon. Okay. Alright. Well. That will be it for this section, friends. I will continue in the next one. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a like below. It really does help. And consider subscribing to the channel to be notified when I upload new content. And until next time, be excellent to each other.